good day to everyone. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your love. And more abundantly, Lord, we are thanking you for your mercies. As we assemble ourselves to call upon your name, we are praying that you will touch our hearts and that we will see you, dear Father, even a little more clearer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the topic of my sermon today is Detox the Mind. Our scripture reading is taken from Micah 6 and verse 3. That says, O my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein I weary thee. Testify against me. Micah 6 and verse 3. The comprehensive comprehension of the three angels' messages is very critical of acceptance as a gift to make it to our promised home. You might have doubt about paradise, but make your doubt about something else. Many have tried to make the word of God a falsehood, but they meet a bitter end. The three angels' messages is our last warning. The gift, if you accept, and in your acceptance, you actually hope in the gift. You will see this warning found in Revelation 14, 6 to 12. From the prelude to the messages, even in its identical expression, we see commands and commandments of God in every message, spelling out the action to obey Christ's word and live. <clears throat> what is the beast in our lives? that is demanding of us to sin so much. The reality is that whatever is causing us to transgress and sin and walk in the pathway of iniquity, it is what we are obeying. And who we obey, we that worship God, our obey Satan, that's our master. The people had cause here and to sin. But who caused him to sin? <clears throat> At or before the rock. When God's people was thirsty and Moses was told to strike the rock. He did. But the other time which I speak of now, Moses was asked to speak to the rock in the presence of Aaron. And he stroke, Moses strike the rock. He could not become a younger man then. And I, and I say this over. The people had caused Aaron to sin. But who caused him to sin? At or before the rock. He could not because his younger brother or the meekest man that ever lived. told him to sin. Aaron did nothing even at that point. He was a priest of God. Joseph had the vision. It shows years of famine. And 
years of play. Again, speaking of Joseph, Joseph had the vision, it shows years of famine and years of plenty. Little, little before the years of plenty, his brother tried to kill him. And others put him in prison. But what, what can we expect? If our brothers tried to kill us, isn't it better than to be thrown in prison innocently than to die in a pit? Innocently. But Joseph know the one. You see, he too know what obedience is. He know that obedience is better than sacrifice. He obeyed his earthly father and he had no problem to obey his heavenly father. You see, he obeyed his earthly father and in obedience, that was the answer. He obeyed his heavenly father and death and prison was the answer. But he obeyed anyhow because he was innocent and Christ was his comfort. The scripture tells us that that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. No suppose we are in charge. But again, let me go over this. We suppose we are in charge. But if any moment you are persuaded that you are in charge, do as Moses did. Pray and preach obedience to God and Christ. Pray and preach obedience for God and Christ. What am I saying? Hear that you might heard before. What I'm saying here is that what I'm saying is that what I'm repeating here is that is not a God you haven't heard before. The commandments is the seal of God. But without the fort, it is just a set of rules that can be amended over and over and over. You can amend them as you choose to do. But when the fort is drawn into sincere accountability, with the others, I should say the other nine. This is where the message in the Bible is seen in the full. You see, I had mentioned the three messages earlier. Many people see apocalypse, apocalypse in reading Revelation. I just want to say Apocalypse is a movie that tries to frighten you. Revelation is warning us to sincerely and spiritually and faithfully, with obediently and truthfully, in all holiness in God to adapt to the warning. In Revelation chapter 14, as I turn and read, Revelation 14, this is what it says. Reading from verse 6, the prelude. And I saw that an angel flying in the midst of the heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, 
and kindred and torn people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea and the fountains of waters. They followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying, with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke, and the smoke of her torment, of their torment, sorry, ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night to worship the beast and his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Verse 12 says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the test and the faith of Jesus. To include the prelude, we must be reconverted, sanctified, and made fit to be the message of the Lord. How can we proclaim the goodness, mercy, and love? and truth of God, if we do not cherish them in our hearts and reveal them in our experiences. In closing, people and animals, even emblems, are exposing two things, godly attributes and the honor of our spiritual creator or ungodly attributes and honor to the fallen devil. And this came due to his disobedience to the word of Where do we get the joy when our altar is made of cut stones? Our offering is just as Cain's offering. You know, recently I learned that mercy and womb carries the same original word in the Hebrew language. If we are um, if we harden our hearts against God's word, where is the door for mercy? The word if actually means admin, admit in its archaic meaning. The word if in its archaic meaning means to admit, to grant, or cause to be. Second Chronicles 7 and verse 14 tells us how to detox the mind. And not just the mind, an entire community, an entire church. And it is divided in nine parts. The first part, we had to read Micah 6 and verse 3, my people. And even in Hosea 4 and verse 6, he says, My people are destroyed because of. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou art rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. 
that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou art forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. And so we see we are in, as I mentioned earlier, nine parts. First part is if my people. But I said again that the archaic meaning for if is to admit. And I prefer to use the archaic meaning. You will get a lot out of Second Chronicles 7 and verse 14. There is also a scripture text in Isaiah 1 verse 2 and 3. It says, Hear, O Israel, hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord had spoken, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox know it is master, and the ass is master's crib. Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. It is my innermost inspired thought and I pray for the entire world praying always that people will go back to basics you know we are humans and we are loaded with errors but God will fix it and so as our scripture reading that oh my people what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I weary thee? Testify against him. Jeremiah 2 and verse 5 said, Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? Psalms 50 and verse 7 says, oh my, Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. Psalms 81 and verse 13 says, O that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. It's painful, very, very painful. To see how much the Lord is stretching for his hand. And Israel, the whole world, is running. We now become lovers of themselves. And when you speak up about the testimony, or speak about the testimony of God in a sincere way, people want to push you to the back of the line. But I say tonight, you will never be at the back of the line when you speak about Christ and His truth and walk accordingly. So in closing, I read to you Micah 6 and verse 5. So oh my people, remember now what Bela king of Moab consulted and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that he may know the righteousness of the Lord. Let us pray. Father in heaven, touch our hearts, dear Lord, because great is thy faithfulness. I pray, dear Lord, that we make efforts to understand your word and be taught of thee. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.